Hey, Rebel Bankers, this is your host, Chris Noggle, and welcome back to the Real Estate Money School podcast. Thank you all for joining me. Hey, before we get into today's solo podcast, and what we're going to talk about today is a really great topic. It's, it's basically how and where to find money to do your deals when everybody's scared to invest. What I'd love to ask you to do is if you like this podcast, share it. Go in and give me a rating and, and tell me what you think of the podcast because we're really going to start putting a lot of focus on this podcast and driving it out to as many people as we can because people need help when it comes to how money really works and that's what we do. So let's dive right into this. Let's dive into your journey to becoming a rebel banker. Your journey to becoming a rebel banker involves you learning. It involves you changing your mindset and it also involves you taking action. Taking action can be a lot of different things. It could be simply just grabbing a copy of my book, Mapping Out the Millionaire Mystery, and taking action on that book. Or like today's topic, we're going to talk about Private Money Guide. The Private Money Guide is teaching you where all the money is, solutions to finding money, where to go, and how not to ask. So you could grab a copy of the book, but don't just read it. Apply the knowledge. Take bits and pieces and go out there and apply it, and that's how you will have success. So let's dive right into this topic. So where to find money right now? So those of you watching, we are in the midst of the COVID-19 economic crash, the, the recession that's blooming, everything else. I've done other podcasts regarding this. As a matter of fact, I've done podcasts predicting that this event was going to happen. Not, not the virus, the market fallout. And we're starting to see it. Everybody thought we were done with it. And here we go. It's about to get fun again. Not fun at all, actually. The markets are about to go down. So that is really the basis for what today's podcast is. And I'm going to keep this short and sweet because it's really simple. So one thing that gets me really freaking excited about what's happening right now is the fact that there is a lot of fear. People are scared. And now when you're looking at it and you're saying, yeah, but people are scared, so they're not going to want to invest money. They're not going to want to do deals with me. Maybe not if you're doing it the way you are, but there is certainly some logic behind this. So hear me out. And I'm going to teach you exactly how to play into this. So there's a ton of fear. And the fear stems from the stock market. The stock market is going down or it did go down and it's about to go down again. So when it goes down this time, Okay, this is going to be the second dip. This would be what you would call a W. So, W is just like it sounds. Market goes down, which it did in March. Then it bounces back up. Okay, then it comes back down again. Now, sometimes in a W, it goes even lower than it did the first time. Sometimes it goes right back to the same point and bounces back up. So, what that's going to mean is a lot of people who have not exited the market, who haven't taken the advice that I've given about, you know, the Warren Buffett saying, buy low, sell high, and don't lose money. A lot of people forgot to sell high. And because of that, they're not going to not lose money. Did I say that right? Let's just say they're going to lose money. And Warren Buffett says, don't lose money. The only way to not lose money is to sell. So here's the deal. A lot of people don't want to sell. They don't want to sell because they are scared and fearful that they will not earn returns. It's kind of like gamblers, right? They don't want to leave the table because they're afraid that the next hand could be their winning hand, but then they keep losing and losing, but then they never talk about their losses. They only talk about their wins. Does that sound familiar? Well, it does to me. So, if that's the case, we need to really play into that sentiment. We need to play into that mindset of what is going on for people. They don't want to get out of the markets because either they don't want to miss out on an opportunity, which would be a rising market, or somebody's telling them not to move out. Going back to exactly what I always say, which is the Will Rogers quote, the biggest problem in America is not what people don't know, it's what people think they know that just ain't so. So a lot of people take advice from those people that think they know what just ain't so. So here's you. You are out there finding deals right? We're all out there looking for deals. It's a bit early. I'm not going to lie, right? Right now we are in June of 2020 and it's a bit early to go out and find deals because the deals haven't really started to present themselves at the levels at which I'm comfortable buying at. I'm still finding deals, but I'm getting lucky. That's all it is. I haven't started finding deals because they actually are all around me. But when the market goes down, 
real estate will follow. But real estate will not go down when there is this much stimulus being thrown into the markets by the government. The government, these stimulus packages are making sure that people that are, un, are not even working, that are on an unemployment, most of them, not all, but most of them are making more being on unemployment than they did when they were working. Where the, where the hell does that make any freaking sense? Well, it doesn't. But that's what's happening. So we just got to go along with what's going on, whether it makes logical sense or not. Second, you've got PPP money, which is the payroll protection plan money and economic disaster relief money that went to businesses, keeping them afloat. But once those monies dry up, which is coming soon, folks, in July, the end of July, the unemployment bonuses go away. That extra $600 a week, gone Okay, unless they decide to kick it into round two, but they're probably still going to end eventually. PPP loans, end, end of this month, or I'm sorry, maybe it's the end of July, but June or July, and then that means all that money's exhausted. So now if businesses aren't open again, if they don't have people coming in and shopping and eating and all that stuff, the backbone of the US economy is not the giant Fortune 100 and 500 companies. There's only 100 of them or 500 of them. How many businesses are there in the United States? A lot. And how are those businesses doing? Not well. But you wouldn't know that if you watched the news, would you? All you ever hear about is the large companies. You don't hear about the small companies that are failing, that are struggling, that are on their last straw before they go bankrupt. It is estimated that there will be over 50, that over 50% of small businesses in America will go bankrupt because of this economic collapse. That's, that's terrible. That means that our economy is going to go down. And when all these things start to take place. When the stimulus money starts to pan out and go away and, you know, when this economic disaster starts to get worse and worse and our, we get deeper and deeper into the recession, opportunities will start to blossom like spring flowers. Deals that you couldn't get at the price you wanted will start to come back and they will start calling you and saying, hey, you remember that deal? Do you still want it? Now, all of a sudden, your price just dropped because the overall market dropped. But you can't do deals without money, can you? So, let's go to the fear factor, right? The markets drop, people get scared, but people are still greedy. They still want returns. So, when you're looking for money in this, I don't care where that money comes from. Let's just talk about a couple sources that are talked about in the private money guide. Number one, how about home equity lines of credit? Before they get frozen by the banks, before the, the values of real estate really start to plummet and people can't tap into the equity in their house, why don't we start talking to people about your deal and take your deal to that person that you know, your friends, your family, your coworkers, talk to them about the equity in their house. Go talk to them about that equity that is sitting lazy on their couch, eating their potato chips, drinking their soda, watching their TV while they're out working because that's what their equity is doing. It's not doing anything sitting there on a piece of paper saying you have access to $100,000 in equity, but you're not doing anything with it. Well, then you and your deal have the ability to change that for these people. Now, these people are probably having problems. So, why don't we just show them how to solve one problem? Let's talk to them about your opportunity, but don't ever ask for money. Rule number one in this podcast is we will never ask for money. So, you're like, well, well, that doesn't make sense. No, no, it makes all the sense in the world. When you ask for something, you're in a position of weakness. So, we're not going to ask, but what are we going to do? Well, we're going to provide value. We're going to go to them and we're going to solve a problem. Ah, when you solve a problem for somebody, you have their undivided attention because they know they have a problem. Now, let's just assume that, that your neighbor, the one you're going to present this opportunity for, his problem is he doesn't have the money or is he struggling a little to make that BMW payment. Great. Solve that problem. Show him how to have his house pay for his car through your deal. See, your deal is the machine. Your deal is the ability, the one thing that's going to basically create that income for him through his money that he lends you, which is his home equity money that's doing nothing. He's going to take that home equity money out He's going to make a loan to you, which there's rules behind this. So, make sure you follow the rules. The money never goes to you. It can't be lent to you individually. It's got to be to an LLC. Uh, you want to make sure there's insurance in place, listing them additionally insured, on and on and on. Don't ever take possession until the deal closes. Got it? If you don't, read the book. But anyway, you're going to show him how to use that equity in his house by lending it to you, just like the bank would lend you money. But then you're going to pay him a return. Now, let's say his home equity line is 5%. 
Most of them are lower right now. But let's just assume 5%. Pay your neighbor 10%. That is enough money where now you make his home equity line of credit payment while the money's out. Secondly, you give him that extra 5%, which is sufficient to pay for his BMW payment. You see, all you did is solve the problem for him or her. You showed them how to use their house to pay for their car. Now, what about other things? There's tons of other places, 401ks, IRAs, all different sources of money, permanent life insurance plans that you could go and pull money from these places and you could use that money for your deals. Rule number one, I already talked about, right? Okay, so let's talk about some of the other rules. Some of the other rules are that's what you need to do is just go solve someone's problem. People will talk to you. People will talk to you about their problems. If you bring up the conversation by discussing your own problems, everybody likes to hear other people's misery. So talk about some of the problems you had in the past. Oh my gosh, I, I used to struggle to make my car payment. I used to struggle to make my mortgage payment. I used to struggle to do this. I used to struggle to do this until I figured this out. See how I, said, see how I did that? I talked about a problem I used to have. I projected that problem to this person I'm talking to. And who is this person? That person is going to be my next private lender. But I projected a, a past problem that I used to have. And then I talked about the solution to that problem. So this is the problem I used to have. Used to struggle with this. Used to struggle with that. And then I learned this. And then I started doing that. Bingo. What did you start doing? your real estate deal. The deal you have right now that you need money for, that you haven't talked to this person about your deal, you've talked about how your deal that you have right now is going to solve your, or how this deal, not this one, but one in the past, solved your problem of paying your car payment, your problem of paying your mortgage. So now what you're gonna do is project your problem over to your neighbor, whoever you're talking to, and you're gonna then say, have you ever had a situation like that? Because it sucks, doesn't it? Well, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. With this COVID thing, you know, you know, Susie, you know, she lost her job. So we're down to one income and it is a bit of a, a struggle. It's a bit of a challenge. You know, my 401k is losing money, blah, blah, blah. My, my mortgage payments are, are way more than, you know, so I'm barely keeping it afloat. And then what you do is you solve that problem. You know, when that happened to me, I, I wished somebody had shared this knowledge with me. So one, let me bring you in on something. I, I can help. I can show you how you can fix that problem. You want to know how? You want to make some extra money? I've got this deal right here. I got this opportunity that we should do. We should do this deal. Well, I don't know about that. I, you know, Susie probably won't like the risk. Well, what about the risk in your 401k? Didn't you just say you're losing a ton of money? Well, let's talk about how not to lose money. Let's talk about how to actually change the tides of that and how to actually turn those tides in your favor. This opportunity will do that. Yeah, but I don't have the money to do that. Well, you you just said you had a 401k. Are you aware of the new CARES Act? The new CARES Act allows you to take loans from your 401k. And what we could do is you could take a loan from your 401k. You could do this deal with me. And then what I'll do, not you, I'll make payments I'll make those payments back to your 401k while that, that loan's out. Then when the deal closes, I will give you a piece of the profit or maybe you know, I'll pay you an interest rate that's enough to pay that loan back plus I'll give you extra money that you can use to pay that car payment and all those things. You see, folks, going out and raising money is so easy because it's the exact opposite of what you've been taught to do. You've been taught to ask for money. You've been taught to go to the traditional sources for money, which puts you in a position of weakness. You want to you wanna really understand how to find money? Well, put yourself in a position of power, and that is by solving other people's problems. But then it comes down to the fear. So your neighbor and the people you're going to talk to, they might be scared right now because it's a scary time. Recessions are not fun. They're scary. So you have to reassure them why your deal is less risky than the, the next deal or why your deal is less risky than their 401k and why they should do this. Number one, real estate's a tangible asset. Number two, you're going to get in and out of this deal fast. Number three, you can show them the comps and you can show them how hot the market is right now, if it's still hot when you, when you listen to this. You just have to break down those barriers of fear. But the other thing that's so great is what's the alternative for people right now? See, it was hard raising money, you know, a couple months ago. 
A couple of months ago, I was up against stock market returns. I was up against people making 50, you know, or not 50, um, making 5, 10, 15% in the stock market. They're not making any money in the stock market. How much money are they making on their CD? Next to nothing. How much money are they making on their bank account? Yeah, not, not much. How much money are they making on their brokerage account? Nothing. They're losing and they're barely making anything anywhere else. So who is the only person who can provide them that solution, which is a return on the, their money? You, you, that's how you overcome fear. You solve the problem and the problem is then also, you're gonna solve the problem, but you're also gonna knock down their, their false beliefs. You're gonna knock down their limiting beliefs of, of fear and risk. Real estate is one of the greatest investments, okay? There is risk and you do have to do this right and you do have to buy the property for the right price, but still there's always a tangible asset backing that person's investment into your deal in the form of a mortgage or a deed of trust. You always wanna put your investors in a first position, just like the bank. If you don't make your bank payment, your mortgage payment, doesn't the bank come take your house? Right. If you don't make the payments, can't they just come take your house? Yep, it's a tangible asset. So in times like this, you literally are the person in power because there is no other opportunities. So when the, there's so much fear, play into the fear. The fear is in the markets. The fear isn't in you. You see, the people you're talking to, they trust you. They believe in you and you're gonna solve their problem. And therefore, they care about three things. Number one, they care about first and foremost, trust in you. They care about your credibility, your trust in the person you are. So hopefully, you are a credible person. Hopefully, you're you've somebody who's done the right things and, and earned that trust. That's number one. The second thing they care about is a return on their investment. That's right. How much are you going to pay them on their investment? What is their return going to be? Well, it could be an interest check every month. Mailbox money, right? Money that shows up in the mailbox each and every single day. Or I'm sorry, every single month. That's mailbox money. So that's the first thing. Or maybe you're doing a profit split on the back end. That's a big check. So you then, that's the exchange, right? That's the second thing is a return on their investment. But folks, this is the most important. A return of their investment is the most important thing. They want their money back eventually. So when you get that deal done and you sell it, or you get that deal done and you rent it out and refinance it and you pay them back, the second you do that, you have completed the entire circle for them. It went from trust to return on investment to return of money. Now guess what? They want to repeat. You've now created a private investor who will continually keep doing your deals until you break that trust that you built, until you screw up. Right now is a time of fear. Right now is a time of change. People need to change. People need to pivot. And you are one of the people that are going to be able to help them make that pivot. And you're going to be the one that's going to help them solve that problem. So folks, I hope you enjoyed this short little thing, but this is all it takes. This is how you raise money in a time of fear. You go into the fear and you help mitigate the fear. You knock down the roadblocks, you knock down the, the false beliefs of what they have. And most importantly, you solve the problems. Go out there and solve people's problems. Thank you all for joining me for this episode of the Real Estate Money School. Make sure you join us in our community, what we're calling the movement. MSTV, Money School TV is the place where all of our trainings, all of our coaching happens, and it's available to you. Money School TV is very inexpensive. It's $19 a month or $190 a year, and it's where we have all the trainings. So, if you liked what you heard in this podcast or any of my other podcasts, all of this step-by-step -step trainings are in Money School TV. So, join us for the movement. Sign up for MSTV, and how you do that is you go to moneyschoolrei.com slash TV, moneyschoolrei.com slash TV, and you will see what we're doing to change people's lives, and I hope you're one of them. So, thank you for joining us for the Real Estate Money School. We'll see you on the next episode. Have a good day.